Hello everyone, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you so much for rejoining me for part two of talking about workplace bullying with Claire Hunt. Just to say a thank you to all those who tuned into part one and who left some amazing, insightful comments. It's always so much appreciated. In part two, Claire and I discuss ways in which you can learn to deal with the workplace bully, especially the narcissistic one. But also, one thing I do want to point out, which we didn't really go into details about, is the element of jealousy and envy with workplace bullies, especially narcissists. But workplace bullies are usually very envious and very jealous of a person, and so they really want to take away their abilities. They want to dampen down any praise they may be receiving any really good um, feedback the person is getting. The, The purpose of the workplace bully is to tear down the person that they're jealous of because they themselves do not possess those really good qualities that that person may have or they feel as though they will never have those qualities. And I have to say, they're right. They're usually right. They will never have those qualities. And I say that because of two reasons, really. One, you are who you are, and that person is who they are. And so a a lifetime of who you are, somebody just can't steal. And that's the other thing. Jealous people usually try and copy, steal, emulate who they're jealous of. It's a phenomenon you would think, well, somebody's je- that person hates me. They, they, they're bullying. But then you find that they're copying what you do, what you say, how you say it. They may, may even be trying to emulate the way you are with other people. It's a phenomenon. It's mind-blowing to watch it happen. Claire has so much experience with this, more experience than I have, I have to say. In, in any case, it's usually out of jealousy and envy of your abilities, who you are, the way you carry yourself, maybe the way you speak, your experience in life. You could even just have a normal life and they will still be envious and jealous and therefore they will try and tear you down, rip you apart and then there comes the hate campaign, the smear campaign to get other people to see you in a bad light They will even try and sabotage your good work. They may try and set you up to fail. All those types of things. Bullying also includes withholding. So they'll withhold information from you so that they think you won't be able to do a better job or a good job with the information. So they'll withhold it from you. And it really is a legal issue. So workplace bullies, you need to be careful of what you're doing because you could find yourselves amongst a legal battle. Every country will have legislation to deal with it. The UK certainly has, and I have helped people in many instances uh, achieve a good result with it. It's different when you're on the receiving end and the workplace bully doesn't think you're smart enough, and that's the other thing. They think they're the smartest person in the building, the one who knows the most. And therefore, you should follow them. You should join their hate campaigns. You should follow them because they know it all. And everybody else is stupid. Everybody else is dumb. Nobody else is as smart as them. And that is a part of the narcissism. And that's how they walk into the workplace each and every day. And when you, if you're, if you're someone who doesn't deal with that yourself, if you're someone who isn't a narcissist, who isn't a bully, then you will watch them with pity, with sadness, with um, empathy, if you can. It's hard to feel sorry for somebody who bullies you. Um, One thing that may irritate you is if you seek help and your management or whoever is in charge gaslights you. In other words, you could tell them how badly you feel and they will say, oh, I don't, they're they're not really a bad person. It will negate your experience and it's unhelpful. In fact, it's as bad as the bully. They too could be envious and jealous of you as well. So never dismiss that. 
They could be as well. But the thing to do is to stop talking about it to the wrong people. Do not waste your time talking about it. And that includes anybody in charge, anybody in a management, CEO, manager position. If they're unable to understand it and if they gaslight you and they say, oh, they don't think they meant it, or they probably weren't thinking, or they probably forgot. If they say things like that, it means that they are not accepting your experience. They lack insight. They are self-absorbed with their own problems and they're unable to hear yours, even in their position. That's what they're meant to be doing, but they don't. So it means you would be wasting your time with this person. In fact, you could be feeding that person's narcissism. They may like conflict. They may enjoy the fact that you're suffering. There could be a part of them that actually quite likes the fact that you, you're not having it easy. Maybe they've heard some good things about you and they are envious and jealous. Perhaps they like the conflict. The other thing is they could be afraid of the bully too. So CEOs, these heads of companies sometimes aren't strong enough either. They can make a deal, but they may not be in a position phys um, physically, psychologically, to address the bully. And therefore, they want an easy life. And they won't have the skills nor the knowledge to address the bully and therefore you won't get help. The only thing that will happen if you keep talking to the wrong people about it is that you become worse and worse, more bogged down with the issue and it's not helpful. These people are in position to help you and if they haven't got the skills to do so, stop going to them. Stop going to them. Go to other people. Go to someone else. And I hope that helps. It's one thing I wanted to address, jealousy and envy with bullying, and also stop talking to the wrong people about what's happening. So here's part two. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave me a comment, leave me and Claire a comment. Go over to Claire's page, follow her on all the social media. I think she's just on Facebook, though. She's not on Instagram. We, I will be back with a recap of season three next week and officially on a break, and we'll be back in October. So enjoy part two, uh, how to deal with narcissistic abuse, particularly in workplace bullying. Here's the interview. Yeah, I felt the same way when I was a tutor. I wanted to lose my clients because when you, when you know enough, then you're free to go. Um, like the wren, the mama bird picking the baby birds out of the nest. Um, I think, um, you know, people can be in, in any profession for the wrong reasons. Um, there is something called, you know, just living your dharma. You're just doing it because it's just what you're supposed to do. It's just inborn. You've probably incarnated in multiple lifetimes with this specific skill or talent and you know it's just what you're good at and you're just doing what you're supposed to do. You're just fulfilling a purpose. Um, I think people who uh, derogate therapist as messed up may have be wearing some kind of narcissistic mask that they don't want you to touch uh, because they don't like being read. Um, there, it's a defense. Um, the assumption is is that if you know something about psychology, then you're automatically going to start analyzing them, telling them what you see. Of course, you don't work for free. Um, and, and it's right, we don't say that about um, in, in any other profession. Um, but there, there are a lot of wounded healers um, who unfortunately can do a lot of damage uh, to their clients. Um, so like I said, I, I, I find therapy marginally helpful um, and, and, and also missing um, a, a huge part of the picture, uh, which is the spiritual component. And you, miss, you mentioned the physical component as well. Um, 
because the opposite of narcissistic abuse is self-care. And unfortunately, when people think about self-care, the first things that they think of are diet and exercise. Um, which is important. I mean, a body that is fed pizza and chocolate is not going to feel good. Um, but I think that um, the overfocus on the physical, which is represented by the devil card and the tarot, um, represents an addiction in and of itself and another self-avoiding and self-abandoning behavior. Um, you can get kind of, for lack of a better term, OCD. Uh, with your diet, like, oh, oh my God, I just ate a carb. I have to do 15 extra minutes on the treadmill. Um, and then this becomes kind of like another addiction uh, to focus on instead of really focusing on the underlying issues. Um, we've all met people who have the perfect, organic, raw, vegan diet and who are still raging narcissist and then we've met the guy who eats jack and a snack for breakfast lunch and dinner and radiates gentle loving kindness um so you know you you can eat a pop tart if you want to go ahead and eat the pop tart it's just within reason you know what you need to do um so that your body feels good um, and unfortunately, when we are around toxicity, like, for example, in a toxic workplace, we can really ne neglect our self-care. Um, so this is definitely going to affect the way that we eat, the way that we exercise, and the way that we sleep. And it's really hard. It's really, really, really hard to um, do the best to take care of yourself when you're, you feel as though you're kind of under assault um but the uh, paradox is you know when you are uh being abused that's when you need to self-care like a boss that's when you need to really up your self-care which is not just uh physical it's also mental like how do you talk to yourself that negative you know that internal critic that negative self-talk a lot of people are walking around with that and they're not they don't even realize that actually the worst bully in your life is actually you. That is so powerful. <laughs> That's very powerful, Claire. And, and I mean, it's not, it's a balance. Um, you know, you're not Jesus Christ. You've made mistakes. But I think the difference here is, is that, you know, if you told the narcissist that you work with that the part in their hair was not straight, um, you know, they would go World War Three. they would go DEFCON 5 on you because they're so crippled by all-consuming insecurity and toxic shame. And because they don't respect you, they can't hear it from you. And if, if you are not that insecure and that filled with shame, you can just kind of acknowledge your challenges and your mistakes. Um... And then, you know, put in the work to try to get better and improve. And you can consider it kind of like a little creative project. When you are being abused a lot and gaslit a lot, it's really hard to take a look at yourself um, and, and your own uh, deficiencies and where you are lacking. It's kind of the last thing in the world that you want to do. Um, but your shadow work really does take the edge off of all of the noise that's outside of yourself. Uh, if you just kind of sit down, take a step back and say to yourself, you know, I can be a jerk too. Mm, absolutely. And I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to do some work on it. I can watch some videos. I can, uh, I can read about it. I can journal about it. Maybe I can do a workbook. Um, I can... Uh, do some spiritual practices, I can meditate, um, I can start working on it um, and try to get better and try to improve and try to evolve, which is what workplace bullies are not doing because they're just taking it out on other people all day. Yes, and that brings me to something you said in one of your amazing videos about workplace bullies being soulless. 
And I always say to people, you know, it's the one who's carrying the yoga mat. Um, <laughs> that you, you know, people, can, you can do as many downward dogs and and vasanas that you want, but if you don't work on this, <laughs> it's just a pose. It's just another pose you're holding or, and breathing in, breathing. You can breathe in, breathe out all day long, which we do. You can do all of that stuff, but if you don't work on your thoughts and what's in your head, then you're just doing, you're going through the motions kind of thing. So yes, it does start up here. And I like what you said about the thoughts, sometimes the bullying thoughts you have about yourself. Sometimes it's just unconscious. You have to be aware of your thoughts as well. So yeah, can you tell us a little, talk about why you said that bullies are soulless? I love that. Well, I think, to be honest with you, when I wrote that, I think I was thinking about one bully in particular who was really a malignant narcissist. I mean, bullies are like narcissists themselves. It, they're on a spectrum. Um, so, you know, we've all worked with some people who are, I mean, are full-on psychopathic. I mean... Uh, in a spiritual sense, most of us have noticed that these people probably have entity attachments. There may be possession. If, you, if, if you're not into the woo-woo, um, then am. you're not into it. But I am, so please continue. <laughs> um, I mean, they are sadistic. They are anti-life. Um, they are murderers in their hearts, and they are trying to commit murder by proxy. Their ultimate goal is to get you to kill yourself or kill someone else, like, for example, with road rage. I mean, there are people walking around who really are that bad. Some of them on the lower end of the spectrum may just have these narcissistic tendencies, you know, like low empathy or variable empathy or just really bad boundaries or toxic shame or low self-esteem. Um, and... You know, to be fair, I think that some of them can make some improvement in this lifetime. Um, the the dead soul, I, 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 I've alternately termed a dark soul. Um, it's just, it's a, some people incarnate in this lifetime with the bully, the abuser, or the victimizer archetype. Those are archetypes. Um and that's what they're, I used to call them the dogs of karma um, because I noticed, I mean, I worked with some people and I was like, you really, like, you don't do anything with your life except hurt other people. You literally don't do anything else. That's all you do, straight up. And I think that they are actually doing what they're supposed to be doing. Um, it may be people's karma. They're meeting out karma to some people, um, or they are just, you know, working in the interest of some darker forces that are at play in our world. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the function, a part of the function of abuse is to raise awareness. And sometimes there are sacrificial lambs. Uh, like, for example, I'm dating myself here, but um, if you remember the O.J. Simpson case from three decades ago, um, I believe he totally did it. Uh, but I remember, I'm old enough to remember after that case, um, there was uh, an increase in information and awareness about domestic violence. Okay, so I don't support or condone the loss of two innocent lives. Uh, but it, it, it did um, ultimately um, play a purpose, at, at the very least, in raising awareness for the rest of us. Um, sometimes, you know, that's the function of evil in this world. So it's a continuum and it's a spectrum um, you do have some bullies in the workplace who are really, I mean, hard, core evil. 
Um, and they're usually the ringleaders. Uh, I call them the arch bullies that are running the show and they're trying to get everybody else on the bandwagon because like I said, all workplace bullying is mobbing and they never act alone. Uh, they, they need allies, they need their accomplices. And then there are people who kind of jump on the bandwagon and go along, you know, may not necessarily be bad people. What they are is very weak. They may be intellectually weak. Like I said, these kind of people who don't really think through or don't look very deeply, kind of superficial, um, and definitely they're spiritually weak. Um, the flying monkeys and the codependent enablers who kind of go along to get along are fear-based uh, because they know that if they don't jump on the bullying bandwagon, they're going to be targeted next. You uh, Let's talk about why workplace bullying is an important social justice cause because I would think it's affecting productivity, it will be affecting decisions, important decisions being made in companies, which filters out into the ether, into the universe, into the rest of everything else. We're all connected. It's all connected. So why is it an important social justice issue? Yeah, so I mean, the waste and the financial cost of bullying is very well documented. It costs millions and millions of dollars to organizations all over the world every single day. Uh, workplace bullies as narcissists are extremely inefficient. Um, like I said, they can spend as long as four hours a day gossiping. They spend more time bullying than they do actually working. It's because they're emotionally dysregulated and they walk into the workplace to get their supply. Okay, so their focus is on getting supply all day, every day. It is not on actual productivity. The revolving door is just the tip of the iceberg. When you have the high turnover, you know, that's very expensive. There's all the rehiring and retraining. Um, and there's a lot of sick leave, a lot of absenteeism. Um, the, the psychological and emotional... Uh, repercussions of this type of abuse are a burden to society uh, because society has to pick up the health care costs for the victims. Um, the ultimate result of workplace bullying is death, which would be the suicide of the target or homicide in the form of mass shootings. That's why we have the term going postal, which is about the first uh, workplace shooting I think that was documented at a, a United States post office, which to me was obviously the result of bullying. Every time I hear about a workplace sh shooting, um, I'm 100% positive that bullying was a factor. We do know that bullying is directly correlated to mass shootings, uh, other mass shootings in society. Uh, most shooters were bullied and or abused themselves so um the effects are dire um and uh it's not just the money it's you know it's literally a matter of life and death um it's a public health issue um and it's it's also unnecessary um you don't need to be using the workplace as you know like some kind of psychiatric hospital for working out some kind of deep personal trauma. You know, there's an army of psych majors out there who would be willing to help um, to work on this so that people can go into the workplace and just work, which is what most of us want to do. But that's very important what you're saying. Um, the productivity, time, effort, and what would you say, what can we tell viewers out there? You may be listening to this thinking, you know what, every place I go into, I'm bullied. Everywhere I go, everywhere, it happens over and over and over again. Is life ever going to be better? What can they do? Well, I wish I could wave my little magic wand and go poof 
everything's perfect. I have been arguing since I began writing my essay on workplace bullying back in 2015 that I disagree with the It Gets Better movement because for many of us, it doesn't get better, it gets worse. And I think that is for two reasons. Number one, as you get stronger, it takes more bullying to take you out. So they have to bully you kind of more hardcore. Um, also, you become more sensitive to it. Um, are narcissism and bullying really on the rise or are we just paying more attention? It's kind of like autism, you know, do you really think that autism has really increased in the population or are we just uh, better able to diagnose it? Um, does it get better? I think you get better. I think you work on your emotional regulation, self-care and personal agency so that you can respond differently to it. Pima Chodron said, nothing, I'm gonna paraphrase, nothing, in, nothing ever goes away until it has taught you what it was supposed to teach you. Um, when you learn to respond differently to the same patterns and the same abuses, that's when they start to diffuse and dissolve. Um, I mean, a lot of targets of workplace bullying, as I mentioned in my pretty privilege video, are physically attractive. And they're, are, are workplace bullies that superficial? Yes, they really are. And a lot of people get bullied just because they're attractive. So all you have to do is wait 30 years until you look like crap, and then everything will be fine. That's the best hope that I can offer you. All jokes aside, um, I mean, in, in some cases, yes, I think it does get better um, as you work on yourself. Um, and then other people find alternative avenues like self-employment and entrepreneurship. Never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button right now. Thank you for your support. You make this podcast possible. Now, back to the show. And this is why I loved your videos, because of your humor. Uh, we need humor in this because it is a serious topic, but <laughs> but the way you put things um, makes it easier to digest as well, because it's distressing to know that somebody is purposely, because I do believe it's on purpose, seeking to hurt people. There's a spiritual law, um, <clears throat> which escapes me at the moment, no, there's a spiritual law, you know, love many, harm none. And I, I try and live by that. Lo try and love more than you harm. Because we're human, as you were saying earlier, we are human. We'll, we'll have our own stuff. And we may be less attentive, less nice, less whatever's going on in your day, things can happen. But try and love more than you harm. I think that's the goal. Um, and certainly that's how I live anyway. I try and love more than I harm. Um, I'd like to think I don't harm anyone or anything, but I do cut my plants down without asking. I, <laughs> um, I stop eating meat, but anyway. So what step by step, what would we say? I mean, one thing I know is you should document things. I think writing things down, because it's all right working on yourself, but sometimes you may have to go the legal route. You may have to say, right, that's it. Um, I'm calling in the big guns on this. I'm going to have to do this, do that, whatever it is. In every country, it may be different. Right. If you feel that you have something to document and you feel that you have enough of a case to consult an attorney, by all means. So what can you do specifically? You said work on yourself, learn how to respond differently. <clears throat> I suppose learn how to, I'm going to use the word trigger for lack of a better term, but learn how, uh, what happens for you. Is it something that somebody says or the way they say it? And maybe learn how to deal differently. Is there anything else people can do to uh, not quit their job, um, not leave that relationship, not move, not sell their house, whatever it is? Yes, I, I'm very tired of people just quitting because that's giving the bullies exactly what they want. 
um, I want and I encourage people to stay if for no reason then it drives bullies crazy which is a lot of fun um, I always say if your boss if you're good with your boss you're golden if your boss is not a narcissist you have a good boss hang in there stick it out if your boss is the narcissist start looking for another job it will never get better um, yes as you heal evolve and up level yourself and you start vibrating at a higher frequency um, and a higher spiritual level um, sometimes that energy can actually um, kind of um, you know push the bullies away um, when they, they see that ultimately they're not getting to you but it's really more about what's going on with you internally because even if you have perfected your poker face if you're still hurting internally they know they know they got you and that's their supply and they're feeding off of you another point i make about bullying is that it is an addiction and i am going to keep saying that until i see it in the dsm it is literally an addiction bullies are addicts they are addicted to bullying and they are addicted to the target and because of that addiction they are always serial repeat offenders uh, you are not the first person that they have done this to the reason that they keep doing it is number one they're very heavily enabled they're enabled either by people actually in the workplace which are their flying monkeys or they have people in their personal lives who are weaponizing their mental health against them and indulging their insecurity um, to keep them insecure and sick um also they uh it's it's an addiction so it kind of worked the first time and so they just keep doing it because it feels good um for that reason depending on the size of your organization i guarantee you there are other victims now i strongly caution against ever confiding anyone that you actually work with um no matter how safe you think someone is when push comes to shove uh, their loyalty will always lie with the organization that is paying them. Um, and when, if you trust someone that you work with, uh, when it turns out that they don't really support you, it's a betrayal like no other. And you don't need that in addition to everything that you've already been through. So I wouldn't talk about what you are experiencing with anyone that you are actively working with. However, you can certainly talk to past victims outside of the workplace. And this is something that I would really like to see. I would like to see support groups for workplace, targets of workplace bullying that are organized around the company or the organization. Like for example, victims of ExxonMobil, victims of Meta, victims of Google, victims of Amazon. Um, this could be online or even in person in your community i've done this several times in my life i've looked up uh, past employees and gotten together with them and when you get together you will find that you are all talking about the same people who did all the same stuff because they again they're addicts they're always repeat offenders and they are thoroughly uncreative and another point i make about workplace bullying is that all workplace bullies are the same People write me every day and say, how did you know? Like, were, did you work there with me? How, how do you know this? This is exactly my experience. Well, that's because they're all the same. It's like a little army, all kind of doing, in the, same, doing the same things very predictably. And that, again, me be some kind of spiritual phenomenon like an entity attachment or some kind of possession some of us have noticed that it's like it's a different body but it's almost like the same spirit is acting through this person and uh some of us have wondered if maybe there's like a spirit that's kind of hopping uh from person to person um but i would say that uh, almost all workplace bullies have some uh spiritual uh, energy 
that is influencing their behavior. Very interesting, which which leads into the soulless bit about may because yeah, I think if you're enlightened in some, it's very difficult for those dark entities to exist or to thrive in any way. That that's forceful, or is that forceful? Such as bullying. Um, and those of us who are intuitive, those of us who can see things, if you're clairvoyant like myself, or if you can see spirit, feel spirit, hear spirit, um, and things like that, you can see different things around people. You, Somebody can walk into a room. I've had that happen recently. Somebody walked into the room and whew, the, the, the energy, I just had, you know, I had to, yeah, I just had to um, kind of, go out of the room for a bit after they left. You, people carry stuff with them very strongly. Yeah, an acquaintance of mine calls that being slammed. You are perfectly fine, everything's fine, you're having a great day, and then you get around somebody and it's ew, ew. And you just can't shower enough when you get home. Um, like I said, most targets of workplace bullying, I believe, are sensitives or empaths, intuitives. Uh, we pick up on these things, and it may reflect in our behavior. So our bullies may uh, witness in us or observe in us some kind of distaste, um, which is then, of course, going to provoke their bullying because they feel judged and disliked and rejected, but they can't take responsibility for their poor spiritual hygiene. The truth is, though, I mean, most people are sick. Most people have trauma. Um, most people are walking around with some kind of negative energy and, you know, unless you're independently wealthy and you want to, you know, shack up like Howard Hughes and grow out your fingernails and drink your own urine in a room for the rest of your life, you have to exist in this world among others and participate in the experience. So it's more about you and how you are being internally and how you are showing up. I spent the majority of my adult life absolutely terrified of humans. I mean, just scared to death. You know, I would feel like I was having a panic attack just trying to pick up my prescriptions at the pharmacy because I was just so uh, disgusted by how negative and sick they were and so so scared of taking on their stuff because that's something that sensitive and empathic people do you know we take on other people's stuff we've been doing it our whole lives and that's why we get targeted because people know that we will absorb their stuff for them and process it for them like i said as i've been pouring cement into my foundation because when i was a young woman i got it in my head that what I needed to do was to just completely negate myself, um, you know, live the ascetic lifestyle of a monk and, you know, self-flagellate all day, every day, and then run around, you know, like a crazy person, uh, pouring my energy and giving away everything that I had to other people, and that meant that I was a good person because I was denying myself, so I wasn't being selfish, so I was, and I was giving. It doesn't work like that, you know. I'm almost 50, and I'm broke, sick, exhausted, and pissed off. It's the airplane mask analogy that has to make its illustrious appearance in every single narcissism video on YouTube. Um, you have to take care of yourself first. And this gives you a foundation to stand on. Uh, I, I know who I am. I have my identity. I have my boundaries. Um, I'm filling myself up with positive energy. And I know how to protect myself. I know how to protect myself psychologically, emotionally, and spiritually. And I know how to cleanse. So I know how to assert my boundaries and then if anything just so happens to get past my boundaries i know that i can cleanse it off and i can transmute that energy that is how you feel safe in this world it's not about you know like developing antenna 
and uh, feeling out like every person everywhere you go with this, you know, hyper aware paranoia, like, oh, you know, oh, what kind of jewelry do they wear? Or what, what's their favorite pizza topping? And oh, red flag, that's a narcissist, run! No, that's wrong-headed, upside down, inside out, and backwards thinking. It's about you and how, again, how you are showing up and what's going on with you internally so that, number one, they don't bother to approach you because you're not vibrating on their level and you don't have any access points, you don't have any holes in your aura that they can take advantage of. Um, and then if they do, you know that you can protect yourself. You don't have to take on their energy. And then if they, if you do, you can cleanse it off. Now that I'm starting to get this, and it's never too late. Like I said, I'm almost 50, you know, and I'm just finally starting to become awakened. Um, I can operate in the world with a lot less fear. I can see, you know, this person, you know, is kind of toxic has some trauma, has some negativity, probably has some attachments. Okay. Okay. I, I've been there. You know, I'm not your therapist. I'm not your mother. I don't have to take care of you. I don't have to take anything on. Um, and I can, I can be in the same room with this person without, you know, just feeling like I want to die like I used to. Hi all, thank you so much for watching. I just wanted to say a large percentage of people who are watching right now are not subscribed. So please, please, please click that subscribe button, subscribe to the channel, turn on your notifications so when a new episode comes out, you'll get a notification, you won't miss it. Also click that like button, it really does make a difference. And finally, on all podcast platforms, leave us a five-star review. It really does help us to keep going. And if there are any topics you'd like me to discuss, do let me know. Yeah. Oh, that, that's, a, that's um, a very good description of what happens, what people can feel, and what they can see, and especially if you're intuitive. What is it? Because I do believe that we who are intuitive feel it a hundred times more than people who are pretty much tuned out. Um, you support Workplace Psychological Safety Act. Um, and if people wanted to know all about that, what would you say to them? What, what's that all about? Yeah, so uh, that is a proposed law here in the U.S. Um, I believe it was... Uh, started by two women up in Boston, um, and they found my videos and contacted me. Um, the law went before the Massachusetts legislature back in October, and because that's how many laws in the states work, we kind of go state by state until it gathers momentum, until we can get it on a federal level. And I testified we're virtually before the Massachusetts state legislature in October, so my testimony was recorded and it's on my, my channel. Um, the video is titled Support the Workplace Psychological Safety Act. And in, in the notes uh, for that video, I put links to all of their, their socials. Um, if you just Google that or in workplace abuse, um, uh, you can find their website and you can find out how you can help. And even if you are outside of the States, um, it might interest you because as we know, laws that are passed in a country do have the power to influence laws in other countries. Um, it's the only um, legislative action addressing workplace bullying uh, currently in the U.S. that I'm aware of. Well, one thing I found is that people do tend to earn less and it may be because they're having to shift and move around a lot. A lot of people leave jobs because they're being bullied. A lot of people have to hop around. They start from scratch or they take lower paid jobs um, because it's affected their self-esteem. Um, I, I see bullying as like a hammer. It's knocking, knocking, 
not, and if you're not strong enough to stand up to it, it's like those peg things. You have to, and it's just, and so you've got to be aware. Is that the case? I'm not saying with you, but do you think that's the case that people struggle financially because of bull bullying as well? Yes, and that's documented in the financial cost of workplace bullying. I mean, the financial impact on the target is disastrous. And yes, many targets take lower paying jobs just to be psychologically safe. Um, and it, it, it affects you in all areas of your life. So that would be not just financially, but of course, emotionally and psychologically. And then physically, it's kind of a chicken and the egg causality problem. I mean, when you are being abused, like I said, you neglect your self care. So you may not eat, sleep, or exercise properly, um, which is going to impact how you think. But then if you get into a negative mental state, then you may neglect your self-care further. So it's kind of like a vicious cycle. And I did a recent video on complex post-traumatic stress disorder and targets of workplace bullying, where I mentioned that recently I... Um, because I've been getting sick over the past uh, year and a half or so, so frequently, um, I went to my doctor and he said that my immune system just basically isn't functioning at this point, and we don't know why, and he prescribed for me the pneumonia vaccine, which in the States is not recommended until you're 65, and I'm old, but I'm not that old. So this is kind of like the social concept of what we call weathering uh, people who are uh, tradition people who belong to protected classes who are you know historically uh, marginalized and oppressed demonstrate lower life expectancy and um, more negative health outcomes for a lot of conditions um, so as I've been saying since the beginning I mean workplace bullying shaves years off your life, um, the effects to your mental and physical health are severe. Um, I hope they are not lifelong, um, but in some cases, yes, it, it, it really can be that bad. Yes, that, that's just incredible, but it is important to take care of yourself and your expertise and the way you're sharing this information is really helpful. So thank you for that. Please keep going. But when, can I ask, when are you going to write your book? Well, I did. Um, so back in 2015, I was teaching a writing class and I was teaching essay writing. And I part of my pedagogy was to demonstrate how to do it for my students so they could have a template or an example. So I thought I'll write a series of essays about workplace bullying. And I thought they were just going to be, you know, two page essays. Well, that whole thing morphed into 117 pages. So it's on my, it's on my website. Um, and the links to that essay are in all of the show notes for all of my videos. Um, I, uh, so it's just some additional support for targets of workplace bullying. We are living in a visual age, as you know. So even though my website was online for years, you know, nobody read it because people don't read anymore. Um, people respond more to uh, visual content. Um, these days in my writing, I prefer to write creatively. Um, I just think that the narrative is more impactful, and I do have an idea for a, a fictional narrative that would demonstrate the workplace bullying dynamic. Um, so I can't make any promises, but I hope that I'll, I will be able to write that one day. Me too, because I think it would be fantastic. I think you must do it. I think it's calling. Because I don't know anything about it, but I'm think, sitting here thinking, we need a book from you. Um, and I like the idea of the creative aspect and maybe fictional, but not fictional kind of thing, you know. Um, so, yes, excellent. Well, Claire, thank you so much. This has been fascinating. I 
we could ask loads and loads more but i would like you guys to jump into the comments and ask the questions that you want to claire uh, all of her links will be in the show notes but her youtube channel is the main place you need to go watch her videos um leave comments subscribe to her channel while you're there subscribe to ours as well <laughs> Um, but please follow her because she is an expert on workplace bullying. I know there's lots of channels out there. But as you can see today, I think it, it's fair to say your own personal experience has created this platform for you to what you're literally doing is teaching. You're still teaching. This is seems to be a theme in your your professional life, you're, you're teaching us all how to manage if we have the unfortunate, um, I suppose, fate, I'm going to say, of being in a position of being bullied in the workplace. And I think the way you teach with humor, with you know, frankness, giving examples, uh, calling things out as they are, saying that they all lie, which they do. Why, do. why do people lie to people who are intuitive? I will never understand that. We can, we can well, right through the lie. They don't, they don't know you're intuitive because they don't have it. They see people as objects. They don't know anything about you. You're just a one body that exists as a tool and service for their supply. Um, the lying, I think like most people who are lied to, I feel that the, the injury is not the lie. It's the assumption that I was so stupid that you thought that I would actually fall for it. That is it. That's it. And I want to say about intuition, um, I have a lot of content about uh, intuitive sensitives and empaths, and uh, you may not have embraced your intuition, um, but if, if that's something that interests you and you feel that you may be empathic and it's bothering you, you can shut it down. So you can get together with your spirit team, however you, you, you work, and you can say, yes, I know I chose to incarnate with a specific gift, but I changed my mind. This is not helping my quality of life and this is just not what i want to do with my life um, if you have some kind of spiritual gift like empathy or mediumship um and it's bothering you uh, you don't have to embrace it and you can ask for it to be shut down it's a double-edged sword you know when you are intuitive you see a lot of things you wish that you hadn't um but you know it helps you navigate traffic Absolutely. And I, I have said before, you can just at least turn it off before you walk inside the workplace. I'm just going to shut this down. I'm not empathic. I'm not anybody's healer. I'm here to work. I don't want to see. I don't want to see this stuff. I don't want to feel this stuff. And get your spiritual shields and guards up either in the workplace or in another public setting. Um, but it is definitely a tool that can alert you. It can ring the alarm. Uh, to get you out of harm's way. And as you say, you know, a lot of people do end up actually in helping professions um, who can be um, narcissists. Um, we hadn't touched on that, I say, as you say, but you kind of, some of our conversation was leading to that. People can be narcissists and end up being a therapist or a doctor or in charge of elderly or a care worker or... You know, they, they are draw, or a, a lawyer, a solicitor as well. So sometimes they can be drawn to, you think, well, hang on, how are they in this, in the helping profession, but they're so evil? How does that work? Yeah, I have a video titled Evil in Helping Service Professions because we know that statistically, thanks to the Workplace Psychological Safety Act, I know that we have the data that demonstrate that the top three industries for workplace bullying are the nonprofit world, academia, and I'm gonna to academia, I'm gonna add education in general and healthcare. Nonprofit world, wow. 
Like, why would that be so toxic? Well, as I explained in the video, that's how evil hides itself. It's altruistic virtue signaling and communal narcissism. It's um, evil has to hide itself, so it's going to hide itself behind the most good seeming thing, so you don't suspect it. Who would, oh, who would ever suspect, you know, like some charity for rescue animals? Oh, it's so innocent. Also, narcissists have a God complex, so they are very attracted to positions of power where they can just tell other people what to do. I mean, your narcissistic doctor literally sweeps into the room in his long, flowing white cloak like Jesus Christ himself. Um, so teaching and uh, medicine and, 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 and healthcare, I will include behavioral health. Um, they like to know that they have some kind of power over other people because they know something that um, their patients or their students don't know. And can you please explain the significance of the wren quickly? Yes, so the wren was a little bird, tiny little bird, and the eagle, this is all folklore, but the eagle, which is huge as we know, so apparently there was a contest between the two of them, and everybody bet on the eagle, of course, because of its size and everything. But very quickly, the wren flew way above the eagle, both in height and speed, and surpassed it all. And everybody was, all the other birds were gobsmacked about it all. Um, and for me, it's a metaphor for, you know, getting up through your challenges, getting over what could be this big thing, be it big business, you know, big pharma, big, um, big boss, big, big, uh, I don't know, whatever, big neighbor, big dad, big, big brother, big, what, what all the names are out there about big, who's big, and what's big in our lives that seem to maybe tower over us or perceive to be towered over, tower over us. So the wren for me is a metaphor, and that's why I chose, I am inquisitive, I always ask questions. Um, when I was little, people you say, oh, you ask so many questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm still asking questions to this day, and that was it. And I was shocked, you know, when I when I saw uh, the link, when the person sent it, saying, oh, my God, that psychiatrist says just use your, your thing. And that, the rin came to me through looking through a book of birds. So it wasn't, I would never have known about that folklore. But I looked it up spiritually, and that's what, what I got. And they, they've obviously seen it on my channel mm -hmm. and used it. I mean, it could be, you know, I've meditated on it, and it could be that it's a coincidence, but I, I just, in, in my soul, it isn't. Yeah, I mean, there's a distinction between um, intellectual property theft and inspiration, Yes. You know, I mean, in this community, we can um, be inspired by one another's content to then kind of create our own spin on it. Um, but narcissists, in addition to being liars, they're also thieves. Um, again, they can't create. They don't ever really create anything. Um, you'll notice that. It's because they're no, no longer connected to the creator. Um, and so they do have a habit of taking other people's stuff, not the least of which is other people's energy. They're energy vampires, and it's because they feel entitled. It's just no boundaries. It's just, it's not yours. If I want it, then I can take it. It's mine. I had a similar experience with my first website that was um, a subject to intellectual property theft as well. And, you know, it was just a learning experience for me because if you are going to put out free content, um, there are these opportunists, these grifters who will just steal. Claire, thank you so much for joining me today. It's been amazing. Thank you for sharing all your insights. And I hope you come back and see us again. Oh, I would be so honored. Thank you so much for reaching out to me. I really enjoyed it. Thanks so much for listening today. Make sure you subscribe and follow on all streaming platforms. Leave me a comment and also let me know if there's any particular topics you'd like me to discuss. 
See you next time.